Um, Logic Explorer is asking, is there a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? And oh, assuming okay. there is, how can it be implemented? Easy. Oh, we got easy. this. Easy. <laughs> like, we have it solved. Okay? Um, yeah. I have no fuck. I know it. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so there is technically no solution and that's why this is a problem yeah okay? i was the, gonna the, say i don't think there is yeah um the solution is going to be people not acting like people do i guess <laughs> like okay so um this is the the, the israel palestine conflict is like a perfect storm of the most destructive elements of nationalism religion tribalism you know um it's like it just it, you know, land dispute it's just it's like the stars have perfectly aligned oh international meddling um global you know being a fuel for yeah actually one of the most important things that keeps this fight alive is how much other players outside of israel and palestine benefit from taking sides in this conflict right from taking attention away from problems at home and being heroes in defending their side and bringing attention to something that has, you know, creating an external enemy. Um, I, this is like the easiest way to for politicians to always take attention away from their bad performances, to, to find an enemy to unite the people against, right? And the Israel-Palestinian conflict works really well with that especially because of the nature of the both sides of this conflict. Uh, one side being Jewish has been the world's famous uh, scapegoat for blaming everything that <laughs> for blaming all the problems in the world on. So it's just very convenient to make that a, a, an enemy and unite people against the other side being Arab and Muslim is also a very, a favorable enemy to create to unite the other other groups of people like it's a, when it comes to uh, putting people against each other people that are not even against in in the conflict but to take sides and make this like a you know blood sports that people like just bet on each side and support each side and makes the conflict last longer it can't be any more perfectly destructive you know what i mean um and just keeps feeding on itself right because the more it, the more you make life miserable for one for one side, especially the the Gaza side, the more you create radicalization within that environment. Like you have the mix of poverty and religion and foreign influence. That's like a perfect recipe for creating radicals. And the other side see, sees also as a perfect situation to justify everything because they see all threats against them as um existential you know what i mean like you don't have any other country in the world where this is where it's this small and until recently it was just surrounded by enemies by ev by every single country around it to wanted to completely wipe it off the map right like so you when you when you are raised in an environment like that on the israeli side you would you would grow to fit to be be okay with anything that could save you like it doesn't you know things that would be morally you might you might find morally questionable in other places to this to you for you this is a life and death situation and then you have that mix with um ancient freaking history right like where something that people keep bringing up as a way to claim um, ownership over something like the worst excuses for claiming ownership um is like ancient history and things that crimes like you have the mental mentality of the crimes of the fought people being you know people today being being held responsible for the crimes of their ancestors on both sides like the most all the goddamn logical fallacies in the world is just like here right I, I, you know and religion most most destructive of all of it right so the solutions we have what are the solutions the solutions are uh one state solution a two-state solution uh, apartheid forever uh, or uh, or Rwanda <laughs> kind of uh, you know that's the four that's the four outcomes right one state solution two state solution apartheid Rwanda likes ending okay 
that's the worst thing you know that's a la the last one is like the one that we want to avoid the most right i've heard interesting the arguments saying that israel would very compelling arguments that israel would be a lot better off if israel gave up the west bank um yeah because no. of there's there's strategically it's very difficult to defend people correct me if i'm wrong but it's ag the idea of removing israel israeli presence from the west bank is almost impossible at this point because of how much infrastructure has gone into not only the settlements but maintaining the highways to the settlements and how to get there and all this stuff so just like trying to detach from the west bank is no longer it, it's not just like an easy fix it's a huge thing okay. but i i think like in terms of solution that would go a long ways it's not perfect yes, but it's not but but here's the problem it goes back obviously obviously the occupation of west bank is like the most dumbest okay okay here's the thing things it's very stupid when you actually look at the occupation of West Bank is that is really, really a bad idea. If you look at people's interests, if you look at this for if you're if you're worried about the sake of Palestinians and Israelis and the economic growth and peace, it looks really bad. OK, but then it look you, it makes complete sense why you would occupy the West Bank once you add religion uh, and a need for otherizing people and a need for conflict. Okay, so here's the thing. The solution to this conflict is the solutions to this conflict. Some of them are kind of obvious, right? People are like, oh, if you do this and this and this, things will stop. And the thing you have to realize is that the people who are in charge, they're not idiots. For you to understand why those things don't happen, you have to understand that that is not the goal, <laughs> right? Things make a lot more sense if you realize that conflict is within the best interest of a, of many of the many many of the actors at play right not all of them right but many of the people that are involved um benefit from the conflict right so that's why make making these easy decisions are going to be very difficult right by the way the reason why i say a rwanda like outcome is because if i actually say what i mean facebook might youtube i might like think like i'm you know i'm advocating for something so i hope you guys understand what i'm saying okay so that's not gonna that's gonna be the worst outcome okay the the two-state solution seems if not impossible pretty close to impossible with all the settlements like undoing that is like going to be like the playing you know solving the mo most complicated tetris game of all time right so and it was purposely designed that way um to make the two-state solution impossible so if we if we have a one-state solution is it going to be everybody's equal or is it going to be apartheid right eventually right like if, if it's like it has to it can't be apartheid forever right it can't that can it's not going to like last like that forever at some point this whole thing is going to collapse right so what's going to happen there's there are more arabs there between you know the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River, and then there are, then there are Jewish people. So at some point, if you have if the this is why I'm telling you the the the, the ethno nationalist uh, uh, Jewish people, the the ones the right wing lunatics in Israel, they are the greatest threat to Israel, right? Because by making the two state solution impossible, they have made a one state solution inev inevitable, and by doing that, at some point, um, these people will have equal rights you know if we don't have the at some point that's what's going to happen because you can't have apartheid forever and we don't we want to avoid a rwanda situation so what's going to happen israel is going to be what and not a not a jewish state anymore because like and again i don't have an issue with israel not being a jewish state i hate ethno states right but the problem is that you have put the arabs in such radical environment like you have radicalized them by creating an open prison in gaza and you know poverty and religious extremism so now if they w when you open that pandora's box and everybody has equal rights i don't know what they're going to do with those rights you know what i mean like i'm not saying that i'm not i'm not trying to be race essentialist by saying like oh if arabs have equal rights to the jews and the, uh, israel's jewish identity is threatened that's going to be bad because israel needs to be jewish israel should stop being a jewish state and just being so, like a goddamn normal state where people have everybody having equal rights like that's what the outcome you want but the unfortunate thing is that you the, 
the Arabs have who have been radicalized, they haven't been radicalized necessarily because they're Arab. They have been radicalized because of the conditions that they have been put in and plus religion, right? We know like Arabs are fully capable of being secular and progressive and all of, and atheists, you know, and all all of that stuff, right? Um, and liberal, we have we've seen it everywhere, right? So it's not like race essentialism; it's just the mere conditions that you're putting them in, right? So, I so the longer this lasts, the longer that we get to the, an eventual one state solution, the more the radicalization is going to make it impossible for this eventual collapse to become peaceful. However. Here's two things that could uh, make it easier and more um, maybe help the situation is there's two solutions to make the transit to one state solution an easier coming together and forgetting the past kind of situation. One is more economic trade between Israel and, you know, in, we see it more happening more in the West Bank, but I wish it was happening in the Gaza as well. Like if if they can't, like Israel and Gaza could economically depend on, on each other, economic development is the best way of de-radicalizing both sides, right? Um, but that's a good solution. The bad solution that the ethno-nationalists in Israel are trying to figure out because they understand that they can't keep this up forever, um, and at some point there's going to be more Arab the Jews and uh, and Jews, and they don't want to give up on the uh, Israel's ethno-nationalism identity is to make conditions so hard. So they are going against this position, right? So I, I, I advocate to make conditions so good for Palestinians and make them participate in economic exchange with, uh, with Israelis, right? Um, but the ethno-nationalists, they're, they're going on the opposite side by trying to make the conditions so difficult and so bad for Palestinians that they just migrate to uh, the ultimate goal is to fix demographically fix the situation what they call fix the situation by making them just go to the other arab countries right so and that's horrible because basically like force a, them into exile yes that's so dangerous because that's an all or none game right because if you go that way and it fails then you have then this whole thing collapse then you have created the most radical of all radicals and now they have the same votes as you. Like, so that's that's the most dangerous. Like, somebody needs to defeat these ethno nationalists in Israel, basically. Oh, yeah, they're Anyways. really crazy. No, I think just to put a bow on it, like, when you're talking about, you're not, just to make it clear to anyone who's c confused, he's not essentializing anything to a group of people. You're talking about a broader issue of, in democracy, if there are not checks and balances, the majority can do dangerous things. That's applicable anywhere. Yes, yeah, I'm not like, so, you know, this is not going to be dangerous because like, oh no, Israel is going to lose its Jewish identity. Like I want Israel to lose its Jewish identity. The problem is not because the problem that could cause is that the, you, yeah, like you, I, I think I made it clear. I'm not being race essentialist when I'm saying the problem is being caused not because these people are, are, are Arab. The problems are going to be caused because you have created the perfect environment for radicalization. I think you want Israel to lose its Jewish ethno nationalist identity, not a Jewish identity altogether. No, Jewish identity altogether. It's a nation. Oh, damn. If people could. No, it's a nation. Why would it have a Jewish identity? Well, but just because of the history. Yeah. I mean, I want the United States not to have a Christian identity as a Christian history. Like oh, United you were States talking about Judaism. Well, I mean, no, like, okay, so I think culture and religion, um, you know, should just be organic. Like a state shouldn't be deciding, like, this is our official either. Whether you're talking about culture or, okay, whether you're talking about ethnicity, culture, or religion, the government shouldn't have any position on that. The people get to be whatever mm -hmm. they want to be. Right? Ideally, it shouldn't yeah. Be the, it shouldn't be the official position of the government that this is our identity, whether religion you know, or culture or ethnicity. Like, all of them are bad, right? Just because the United States has a Christian history, I don't want the United States to have a Christian identity, whether cultural or religious. Like that's the people, the people just organically be whatever the, they want. Okay. No, I get you. I get what you mean. It just, that struck me. Cause I know a lot of people find that sentiment to be deeply anti-Semitic to try and strip what? Israel of its Jewish identity. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Strip it, 
strip it off. Like, no, you're not stripping off of its Jewish identity. You're giving the people the freedom to be whatever culture, religion they want, and you don't have any quotas on ethnicity. Okay, mm -hmm. you're actually not forcing anybody to anything. You're like, if if a, if a, if a nation doesn't have a religious or cultural identity, that's not restricting a nation. That's providing more freedom because people because they're not being mandated by the government to be going to one direction rather than another. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's all organic. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below